So now that we've seen three major ideas, voltage, current, and resistance, and we've also seen that different objects have different resistances. Let's try and find out what are the factors that affect this resistance. And I want you to have the imagination this way. Let's again zoom into our picture of a wire and go really, really inside till the wire begins to look like a tube. And once you go inside, you see all these positive charges arranged neatly. It's called a lattice, a metallic lattice. A typical metal can be imagined to be this way. And if you go inside, you would notice that all the electrons are kind of free to move between these atoms. Like they get attracted by an atom, but not enough for it to hold on to it tightly. In an insulator or a bad conductor, all the atoms are very, very possessive. They're going to hold on to these electrons quite tightly. In a conductor, these electrons are free to move as long as they're moving within the conductor. Now, as you begin to imagine this, let's look at all the positive charges there and look at, look at a sea of electrons flowing freely through them and like we imagine in random directions. Now, what's the job now? The moment you create a potential difference, what's going to happen is that all the electrons are going to try and go in one particular direction. But who doesn't want them to go? The protons. Because they are going to attract these electrons and try to trap them into the atom. Thereby, the kinetic energy of the electrons is lost. And when that is lost, what's going to happen? The current is going to reduce. Now, one of the interesting analogies you can think of is this. How many of you here watch football? I'm sure some of you do. And even if you don't, you know what really happens, right? Let's say all these electrons are forwards or attackers. And all the protons of the atom are defenders. Now, what's the job of a defender? He's going to try and stop the electron from flowing from one side to the other. And the more one electron flows from one side to the other, or the more the attacker passes from one side to the other, the more the current. Let's imagine what's going to happen now. Let's imagine there's a long field and all the electrons, a group of electrons entering that field with a group of defenders standing where they are. Now the problem being these defenders can't move around too much. Yeah, They'll stand where they are and try to catch these electrons. Now what's going to happen? These group of attackers are going to try and penetrate these defenders and go to the other side. Now typically, if I increase the area of this field, what's going to happen? More of these electrons are going to enter or more of these attackers are going to enter at any given point of time. Thereby, more of them are going to make it at the other end. Increases the current or in other words, decreases resistance. Doesn't it? Because as, as much as current increases, resistance is going to reduce because the potential difference is the same. Now, keeping that imagination in mind, let's see what happens. What's the first thing we saw? The larger the area of the field, more the attackers we can introduce at the same time, thereby more of them can make it at the end. The more of them make it, more the current. Now, what if we make it a very, you know, bring it back to its old size, but make it longer now? What's going to happen? As an attacker, as you're dosing these defenders, you have to pass more defenders before you reach the end, which means lesser your chances are, because if one defender doesn't catch you, the next one might, the next one might. Thereby, the probability of you reaching the other end reduces. In other words, current reduces. More defenders end up catching more attackers. Thereby, resistance increases. So what are the two things we've seen? 